Hi, my dear friends and my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Hope you all are fine by the grace of God. Welcome back. Let's continue our meditation with the help of the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit has given us the topic, patience of the saints. In that he has given us the subtopic, Christ without the cross. This will be part 2, section 3. Let's continue. Please turn your Bibles to Revelation chapter 3. We will do verse 10. Revelation chapter 3 verse 10. Now in this series of messages, uh, the Holy Spirit has given us the question and the answer. The question is, do we have to undergo tribulation in order to enter into the kingdom of God? And the answer he has said, yes. We have seen all this in the previous messages. Please go to the channel Grace Fresh Foods Ministries and with the help of the Holy Spirit, watch those messages and be blessed. Now, Revelation chapter 3 verse 10. Because you have kept the word of my patience, I also will keep you from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. From this verse, you know, those, uh, the masquerading ministers of the devil and the apostles of the apostasy who say that the church will be taken before the tribulation, they misinterpret this verse. That's why the Holy Spirit today wants to expose the work of the enemy and he wants to give the correct interpretation for this verse. Because you have kept the word of my patience from, for that, from that phrase in this verse, the Holy Spirit would like to reveal to us what he means from that. In that he wants us to concentrate on the phrase kept the word. It says, because you have kept the word of my patience. So he wants to reveal to us, what, do, what does he mean when he say, keep my word. Let me ask what. So it says, because you have kept the word of my patience. In that phrase, he wants to reveal to us, what does he mean when he says, Keep the word, meaning keep my word. For that, from Revelation chapter 3, verse 8, he's telling just two verses before. I know your works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For you have a little strength, and have kept my word, and has not denied my name. So from the verse, Revelation chapter 3 verse 8, the Holy Spirit is revealing that for the phrase, kept my word, it means you not denying my name. You are confessing my name. You are confessing my name in front of men. That's the meaning. See, I know your works because I have set before you an open door and no man can shut it for you have a little friend and has kept my word and has not denied my name. Keeping his word means not denying, of course, not letting go his word and not denying his word, not denying his name, not denying the one and only Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So, from Revelation chapter 3 verse 10, when he says, because you have kept the word of my patience. So, in that, the kept the word, it refers to keeping the word of God. So, that's why from Revelation chapter 3 verse 8, he says, and has kept my word and has not denied my name. So, keeping the word of God, meaning not denying the word of God, not denying uh, Jesus' name in front of men. In front of this world, when we, especially when we undergo tribulation and persecution and all that, they will try to make us renounce the faith and all that. Let me ask some water, please. And about this, not denying the name is so serious. We confessing Lord Jesus to the world is very Important and it's very serious for that. From Matthew chapter 10 verse 32 and 33, the Holy Spirit would like to reveal this thing. What is that? Verse 32, Matthew chapter 10 verse 32. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, 
him will I confess also before my father who is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my father who is in heaven. Now, from verse 32, when he say confess, whosoever therefore shall confess me before men. What does confessing mean? You know, of course, the devil from Isaiah chapter 14, verse 14, he, was, he said, I will be like the Mosai, God forbid. So that's what the devil wants. He wants he wants everybody to come into devil worship and all that. That's the struggle going to be. Who is your God is the question we have to keep on answering every moment of our life. So this world, the kingdom of darkness, the beast system of this world, the masquerading ministers of the devil, the apostles of apostasy and so on. They will try to make us renounce our faith. They will try to make us fall away from our faith with their lies and deception and bewitchment and threat and temptation and trap. But we should not let go of our faith. We cannot go away from our God. God forbid. We should, no matter what happens, we should stick to our faith, our loving God who gave himself on the cross. So confessing is so important. Confessing means confessing the truth that the one and only God Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior of this world, came and died for the sins of the whole world. And because of that, we have, through His grace, we have a chance to repent and uh, to be transformed into the image of Jesus Christ and to be cleansed every day and to be sanctified and from a sinner becoming a saint. And then by God's grace, when we endure till the end, we can enter into the kingdom of God. That we cannot deny. No matter what the threat is, we have to confess. That's why from Matthew chapter 10 verse 32 and 33. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my father who is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my father who is in heaven. Let me ask a word of you. From Revelation chapter 3 verse 8, keeping his word means not denying his name, not denying his word, not denying his name and all that. That's why from Matthew chapter 10 verse 32 also, confessing means, confessing that who is the one and only God. Because the devil wants to be like God. He said, I will be like the Most High. Uh, sorry, Isaiah chapter 14 verse 14. So our confession is very important. That's why in Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 also, thank you Lord. It says, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony and they did not love their uh, life to the death. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. Right. So, confession is very important. That's why here Jesus said, whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my father. And whoever will deny, I will also deny. That's what he's telling. Why is it so important? Let's continue. Revelation chapter 3 verse 5. Revelation chapter 3 verse 5. It says, He that overcomes the, uh, the same shall be clothed in white gown, uh, white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Amen. Hallelujah. So, please check, I mean, refer all these three verses. Now, we started from Revelation chapter 3 verse 10. There it says, because you have kept the word of my patience. In that, the, 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 the Holy Spirit is revealing to us what does he mean by keeping the word. Right? For that, Revelation chapter 3 verse 8, he said, keep and has kept my word and has not denied my name. So, keeping his word means you know, not denying his name, not denying the word, confessing the Lord and all that. That's why from Matthew chapter 10, he said, whoever confess me, I will also confess. Whoever deny me, I will also deny. Then from Revelation chapter 3 verse 5 to let us know what is the seriousness of this. He is telling, he that overcomes, we have to overcome my dear brothers and sisters. We have to overcome with the blood of the lamb, the word of our testimony and we should not love our life till death. That is Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. So that's how we overcome. He that overcomes, the same shall be clothed 
in white raiment and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. So he's, what Jesus is trying to say here, the Holy Spirit is telling that those who confess me, I will also confess and if I confess, I will not blot out of the book of life. But God forbid, those who deny my name, I will also deny their, them before my father. That is from Matthew chapter 10 verse 33. So if he says he will deny, that means he's trying to say he will blot out from the book of life. This is that serious. Being blotted out from the book of life is that serious, my dear brothers and sisters. That's why we have to keep his word. We have to confess no matter what. We cannot give in to any threat whatsoever. That's the meaning of keeping his word. Meaning not denying his name. Not denying the word. Not denying that he is the one and only God. Not denying that he is the Lord and Savior of this whole world. Then only he will also confess us in, to, his, uh, to his father. And then he will not blot out his, uh, I mean our name from the book of life, his book of life, you know, it is the book of life of the Lamb. Let me answer what please. Let's continue. Now, Revelation chapter 22, verse 18 and 19, please. Revelation chapter 22, verse 18 and 19. For I testify unto every man, this is Jesus speaking, that Hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Now, regarding keeping the word, keeping the word of God, one thing the Holy Spirit revealed to us two points. First point is not denying him and confessing him boldly. Right? That is the first point. Second thing is not meddling with his word. We have to get the correct interpretation from the Holy Spirit who is the one and only Spirit of Truth. We cannot misinterpret, we cannot take out some and add some and all those things. That's the warning here. See, he says, Revelation chapter 22 verse 18 and 19. For I testify unto every man that hears the word of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Plagues refer to, you know, when, when Jesus is breaking the seal, what are the things, what are the plagues going to come on this world? And when the trumpet is being blown, all the seven trumpets and the seven vials and all that. That's what he said, I will add that to that person who is trying to add to the word. Please do not tell anything what the Holy Spirit is not telling to you. Let the Holy Spirit talk through you. You don't talk from your mind or heart, my dear brothers and sisters, or any so-called servants of God. Don't be a masquerading minister of the devil. Don't be the apostles of apostasy, telling that before the tribulation, the church will be taken and all that. God forbid. Shame on your hypocrites. Please repent. Don't play a fool with where the people are going to spend their eternity. That is their salvation. We have to give account. Each and every one of us have to give account. Even, even Ezekiel chapter 3, chapter 33 and all that he told, God told Ezekiel, I will ask for each drop of the blood. Please take it seriously. Ask for the Holy Spirit. He will reveal to you. Then you share the word. Don't misinterpret. It's so dangerous. See here. And verse 19 is telling, And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Out of the book of life, if the name is taken, God forbid. Out of the book of life, if it is taken, if you play the fool with his word and try to take away half of the word here and there and all this, many are doing that. Out of context and all that. If any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, I will. God shall take away his part out of the book of life.
Revelation chapter 22 verse 15. So if the, God forbid, if the name is taken out of the book of life, then you will end up in eternal fire. That's what verse 15 is telling. For outside, meaning in the eternal fire, are dogs and sorcerers and warmongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loves a lie and makes a lie. The, 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 you know, the masquerading ministers of the devil and the apostles of apostasy are the ones who make the lie. And those who love the lie, they are the gods in sheep's clothing. They are driven by selfish spirits as to what they can get from God. Nothing about spiritual blessing, always about worldly blessing. And these masquerading ministers of the devil and the apostles of apostasy are the wolves in sheep's clothing. They all will end up in eternal fire. Please repent. It's not worth burning forever and ever. Can't even die and escape. There is no mercy killing. Nothing. Let me have some water please. So my dear brothers and sisters from Revelation chapter 3 verse 10. When God says because you have kept the word of my patience in that Keeping the word means not denying him, his name, his word and all that. That is one point. Second point is don't meddle with his word. Let you by yes be yes and no be no. And anything other than that is coming from the evil one. Knowingly or unknowingly, don't allow misinterpretation and all that. That's why the Holy Spirit is very grieved and angry that Revelation chapter 3 verse 10, they are misinterpreting. So those are the two points when it comes keeping the word. First is not denying, not denying God and his word and his name. Second thing is not meddling with his word. If anybody dare to do that, then they will end up in eternal fire. Please repent. God doesn't want anybody to perish, my dear brothers and sisters. Then Revelation chapter 21 verse 8. So who are all? will end up in eternal fire. It says here, but the fearful, you don't want to confess. And when you give in to the threat and all that, you don't want to confess, then the fearful will not enter into the kingdom of God. They will enter into eternal fire. You don't want tribulation. You don't want persecution. You gods, please allow the Holy Spirit to make you into sheep again. Don't remain a goat in sheep clothing. You cannot have the spirit of fear. You are called to overcome the spirit of fear with the spirit of power. That is the Holy Spirit. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. We are not given the spirit of fear. But the spirit of power. A love and sound mind and all that. Okay. But the fearful and unbelieving. How much? How much the Holy Spirit plead with you? All oh no, no, no. You don't want to believe. And you believe that before the tribulation the church will be taken up. That means you are not ready for any tribulation and persecution. And when the tribulation and persecution come. Many will renounce their faith. That is the apostasy. Matthew chapter 24 verse 9 is talking about persecution. 10 is talking about apostasy. Many will fall away. Many will be offended and will betray each other and hate each other. Please take these love, loving warnings of the Holy Spirit. But the fearful and the unbelieving and abominable and murderers and warmongers and sorcerers, idolaters and all liars. Those who love the lie, make the lie. Revelation chapter 22 verse 15 is talking about those who love the lie and make the lie. Here all liars, both, both the gods and the wolves will not enter into the kingdom of God. But enter into eternal fire. Just because you cover yourself with sheep's clothing, it's not going to help. God searches the heart. He knows each and every single thought of ours. And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. I am pleading, my dear brothers and sisters, like a fellow brother. Let me have some water, please. Now you take it very lightly, God forbid. On judgment day, you will know the seriousness of these, these loving warnings, this shouting, this pleading and all that. You may think now I am angry with you and all that. Who am I to get angry with you? Did I die for you on the cross? It is the Holy Spirit who is grieved. Out of love he is pleading with us. Then, 
Revelation chapter 3 verse 10 it says because you have kept the word of my patience so keeping the word we have seen and what does it mean kept the word of my patience so here for that the Holy Spirit revealing that word of my patience means my patience refers to patience of Jesus and that patience of Jesus comes from faith of Jesus on God and his submission to father's will to death even on the cross. That's why in the previous message we have already seen from 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 4 and 5. So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith. This is through Paul the Holy Spirit talking to the disciples in uh, the saints in uh, the church of Thessalonica. So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecution and tribulation that you endure. Why? Verse 5 is telling, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer. This we have already seen in the previous messages. You please go to the channel and watch the message with the help of the Holy Spirit. So, Revelation chapter 1 verse 9. Before we go into that, from 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 4 and 5, it clearly says here, so that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and the faith. So first, it starts with the faith. With the faith, you get love. Right? And then with the love, you will get the patience, the endurance and whatever is needed in the when you when we undergo persecution and tribulation and all that. That's why from Revelation chapter 3 verse 10 from the phrase word of my patience it means my patience means patience of Jesus which comes from the faith of Jesus on God and his submission to father's will to death even on the cross even the suffering on the cross he gave himself up to death even the death on the cross that's how we have to be that's the correct interpretation of the Revelation chapter 3 verse 10 Word of my, because you have kept the word of my patience. And Revelation chapter 1 verse 9 it says, I John who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom of, uh, sorry, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. Through John also the Holy Spirit is telling. Let me have some water please. That is talking about the patience of Jesus Christ. Only when you have that patience. That is patience. The word includes all the endurance, the perseverance and all that. Long, su long suffering and all that. So, when you have the patience of Jesus Christ, then only you can endure all the tribulation and persecution. Then, from Revelation chapter 14 verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. You see, that's the faith of Jesus. Right? So, the phrase, word of my patience means, my patience refers to faith of Jesus. Because it is Jesus who is talking there. And patient, so, my patience refers to patience of Jesus. And it comes from the faith of Jesus on God. And his submission to Father's will to death, even on the cross. That's why Revelation 14 verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And verse 13 says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Okay, so from Revelation chapter 3 verse 10 when it says because you have kept the word of my patience we, now by God's grace the Holy Spirit has given us the correct interpretation about what does that mean because you have kept the word of my patience. So when we do that, that is when we have the faith and love and then endurance uh, during the tribulation and uh, the persecution and all that then if you do that, then he is telling. Because you have kept the word of my patience, I also will keep you from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. 
So from the latter part of that verse, Revelation chapter 3 verse 10, I also will keep you from the hour of temptation. What does that mean? I will keep you from the hour of temptation. That the Holy Spirit would like to reveal to us from John chapter 17. Please turn your Bibles to John chapter 17 verse 12, 15 and 17. We'll do these three verses. We don't have time to go through all the verses. But you please meditate John chapter 17 with the help of the Holy Spirit in your personal fellowship. All right, John chapter 17, verse 12. Let me ask some water, please. John chapter 17, verse 12. While I was with them, this is Jesus praying to Father and uh, Father God, and then he's telling, While I was with them, them refers to the disciples in the world, I kept them in your name. You, uh, sorry, those that you have given me you gave me i have kept and none of them is lost but the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled son of perdition refers to judas carrier right so he is lost because he gave he gave he to the devil the lies of the devil instead of the truth of our loving god so while i was with them in the world now jesus knows that he's going to uh, be taken you know after the suffering on the cross he is going to be taken so now he is praying for all for the disciples for the world and for those who will believe uh, after that is you and me and all that so when he is praying he is telling while I was with them in the world I kept them in your name what does keeping mean those that you gave me I have kept and none of them is lost that means keeping us mean not allowing us to fall away from the faith not allowing us to be lost that is the meaning of keeping us meaning protecting us in the faith see while I was with them in the world I have kept them in your name those that thou gave me, I have kept and none of them is lost. I kept them. I did not allow them to be lost, to lose their faith. And that's why out of 70 uh, disciples or so, when 58 of them left, when Jesus told, uh, eat my flesh and drink my blood and all that, then it is a hard saying and they left. But he turned to the disciples and he asked, Will you, are you also, do you also want to go? Then Peter said, how, how, how can we, where, where are we to go? You have the word of life. So, they were not lost. That's the meaning of keeping them. Without being lost, without losing the faith, without moving away, falling away from the faith. That's the meaning of keeping. Not taking out of the world when the tribulation is going on in this world. That's how they misinterpret. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that you gave me, I have kept. And none of them is lost. But the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And verse 15. I pray not that you should take them out of the world. There you see. Keeping them. Meaning not taking out of the world. See, I pray not that you should take them out of the world. But that. You should keep them from the evil. That means from the all the temptation, the threat, the trap of the kingdom of darkness, the, the beast system of this world, the masquerading ministers of the devil, the apostles of apostasy who say before the, I mean sorry, yeah, before the uh, tribulation, the church will be taken up and then nobody is prepared for persecution and tribulation and when it comes, many are going to fall. Matthew chapter uh, 24 verse 9 is talking about persecution and tribulation and verse 10 is talking about apostasy. Many will fall away from faith. So we shouldn't listen to these kind of lies. This kind of misinterpretation. Keeping them means not allowing them to fall away from faith and it doesn't mean you, are, you will be taken from the world. That's why verse 15, John chapter 17 verse 15 says, I pray not that you should take them out of the world but that you should keep them from the evil. You should keep them from the kingdom of darkness, the beast system of this world, the masquerading ministers of the devil, and the apostles of apostasy. Let me ask a word. And verse 17 says, 
sanctify them through your truth your word is truth yeah you see only the word the truth the word of god the one and only word of god will set us free the truth will set us free and the one and only spirit of truth is the holy spirit he is the one who inspired different characters to write the whole bible only he can give us the correct interpretation my dear brothers and sisters please do not listen to the lies of the masquerading ministers of the devil and the apostles of apostasy please be prepared for all kinds of tribulation and persecution whatsoever nothing and no one should be able to separate us from the love of god amen hallelujah we cannot lose our faith we cannot lose our salvation we cannot take it lightly about where we are going to spend our eternity so that revelation chapter 3 verse 10 the verse which they are misinterpreting is because you have kept the word of my patience i also will keep you from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth they will say okay before the tribulation this verse says that the church will be taken it's a lie lie from the pit of hell so keeping the word means not denying but confessing our lord and then other thing is not meddling with the word of god anybody meddle with the word of god those who love the lie as well as those who make the lie will end up in eternal fire please don't be a god be a sheep that's about that and i also will keep thee from the hour of temptation means that is from john chapter 17 verse 12 15 and 17 the holy spirit revealed to us saying that while i was with them in the world i kept them in your name those that you gave me i have kept and none of them is lost that means keeping us without falling away from the faith keeping us from uh, without being lost that is helping us to continue you know empowering us and strengthening us and helping us to continue till the end only those who endure to the end will be saved so this is talking about i will you know keep them means not allow them to be lost and verse 15 is clearly telling i pray not that you should take them out of the world but that you should keep them from the evil that's why you see his jesus is clearly saying in his prayer to father okay i am going to come father but these are going to be in the world but i want i am praying that you will protect them keep them means protect them from the evil one you will you don't allow them to fall no matter what the persecution and tribulation of course we have already told them it's going to come and they have to be prepared for that matthew chapter 5 matthew chapter 7 matthew chapter 10 matthew chapter 24 everywhere many places in the scripture it's told about persecution and tribulation and you keep them you uh, you, you keep them with the help of the holy spirit with the empowerment of the holy spirit So my dear brothers and sisters I hope you all got the correct interpretation but you please meditate these things with the help of the holy spirit in your personal fellowship god bless you all god bless you all don't allow anybody